we've always developed systems that are interactive and that are completely transparent and completely defensible. That's what, uh, to me, the technology can bring to an appraiser. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide, your host. Dustin Harris. Welcome, 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 everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair. Once again, got a great guest coming up. Want to remind you, we are sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode, of course, is the software that I've been using for over 20 years. They've been in business helping out appraisers for over 30 years. Go to alamode.com for more information, or you can call them. Just pick up that little phone. You know that thing you carry around with you all the time? It's got numbers on it. It dials out. 800 Alamode is the number. It's 800 Alamode. Of course, uh, Data Master. Data Master has been sponsoring from the very beginning. And uh, Data Master is a great way to utilize technology, which is what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. Actually, a whole lot about today. Uh, but Data Master allows you to take technology to make you, the appraiser, more efficient. Go to Data Master. USA.com for more information. One more time, datamasterusa.com. And finally, we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Folks, I love Working RE. Just this morning, woke up and uh, there it was, a Working RE email and uh, allows me to learn more about my profession, my chosen profession, which is appraisal. Uh, you should be on their email list. Go to workingre.com. Again, it's workingre.com. Well, folks, we got an interesting program for you today. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a guest I've never had on the program before. Um, this guy uh, knows his stuff. As I introduce him here in just a little bit, uh, you, you'll find out why I, I say that. We're going to be talking about technology today. We're going to be talking about using valuation technology within the appraisal process. Uh, again, that's different than just the appraisal practice itself. It's incorporated into, it's the under the umbrella, if you will, of appraisal practice. How are you using technology to help you to be a better more qualified appraiser. Uh, I want to bring on the program Mr. Mark Stockton out of uh, beautiful New Mexico. Uh, welcome to the program, Mark. Thank you. It's really good to have you here. Uh, Mark is with MR Technologies. What's the full name again, Mark? MR Technologies Housing? MR Technology Holding. Holding. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, tell us a little bit about your company and, and, and what you do, and then we'll talk a little bit about your background as an appraiser. Yeah, our company is a, uh, a development company. We build analytics uh, for appraisers, uh, and that's all we do uh, for property valuation of all sorts, really, uh, be it uh, independent appraisers, portfolio analysis, uh, you name it. Okay, and and you come by this rightly uh, because as we were talking off the air, you've been you've been appraising for a, quite a long time. Do you mind uh, saying what what year you started? <laughs> And, and I'm really not as, as old as I sound. You just started I young, started right? in 1968. <laughs> okay, well, say that uh, again because well, I got cut out a little bit. I think it's important. I mean, if anything, people have got to hear that year. One more time. 1968. 1968. I really do think that that's probably the earliest year of anybody I've ever uh, inter And I've interviewed a lot of people on this program, but uh, <laughs> some people say 80s. Few people say 70s. I don't think anybody's told me 1960 something. Congratulations. That's awesome. Well, uh, I was actually uh, in banking in a small town in Wyoming in the 1960s, uh, and we had no appraisers in the area. The closest appraiser was over 100 miles away. So by default, I became an appraiser yeah. uh, so that I could do the work for the local bank. Well, and I will just say this much. Uh, my listeners know that I also am an active appraiser, and uh, you and I were talking off the air, and that little town in Wyoming is actually the furthest area that I travel to currently, uh, one way. And uh, I do cover that little town in Wyoming, and, and I actually love that drive out there. It takes me about three hours one way uh, to get there. I appraise it because I've I've appraised it for many years. I, I feel like I know the market very, very well. But again, here, here fast forward many, many, even decades, 
woods. And there's still very few appraisers that cover that little area. And so I was begged by my clients years ago to, to start covering that area. And uh, um, I'll tell you, it's a great little town. It's a great little area and great, great state. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So Mark, let's let's set this up this way. You know, appraisers, let's just address the elephant in the room, if you don't mind. Uh, sometimes we get a little fearful in the way that we act. And I think that's just human nature in general. Uh, humans don't like change. And sometimes technology is all about change. It's different sometimes than what we uh, have originally done. And, uh, and, and technology with valuation is no different. And, and I think that what we're finding, at least the way I have experienced life the last few years is that the way that we've always done things, if you will, Mark, as appraisers, is is uh, changing. And in the sense that three comps and you're done <laughs> is no longer uh, okay. Um, you can't just throw in some subjective adjustments, make some comment as to you know why you did what you did, and expect that to be okay. Our clients are requiring more and more support for what we do. So, tell me where your uh, expertise comes in, in in that field. Okay, uh, let me mention that if if anybody is uh, resistant to change, boy, I'm one of them. Uh, I'm 71 years old. Guys who are 71 years old <laughs> don't like change, yeah, and I yeah. and I didn't like change when I was 35. But I got involved in this. Uh, the the, the uh, reason I got involved was because, as I mentioned earlier, I was in banking. In the mid-70s, uh, I developed a banking program, which led me to talk to a lot of bankers around the country, and they were very disappointed in the appraisal process. They did not, uh, they, they had to have an appraisal for every uh, mortgage that they did. Mm -hmm. They took a long time to get the appraisal. It cost them a lot of money. And according to them, they said, and we don't believe it. <laughs> and the reason they said they didn't believe it was was real simple. And, and this is a lesson that I think we all need to learn. They didn't believe it because they couldn't understand it. They didn't understand where the value came from. And I got to thinking about that. And I thought, well, you know, they're right. You, you've got a mm. form. That form's got lots of information on it. It tells you everything you needed to know about a subject property and probably a lot you didn't need to know. Right. It tells you lots of things, but it does not tell you as a user where that number come from. Mm. So we thought with working with some bankers and with some appraisers, we would develop a, a an automated system. And I use that. But we called it a computer assisted system uh, to uh, help the appraiser be more efficient and develop more accurate uh, value conclusion. Now, wait a second, you, Mark. I got to interrupt you. you. I, I heard you didn't say these words, but I heard automated valuation model there, AVM. It, it was the first automated valuation model, uh, copyrighted in 1981. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Back when we parachute pants were, were in style, right? Austin, uh, when I uh, give talks to groups of people, small groups, not large groups, uh, I, uh, I go out beforehand and I buy a, a bag of tomatoes and I put a tomato in front of everybody <laughs> and I tell them that, that I am the guy that, that uh, developed the, the AVM. I love it, How, man. I love the tomato thing. I, that I, tomato, <laughs> before you throw that, let me tell you this. It was developed for appraisers. It was not developed for all the companies that are competing with appraisers. It was developed for appraisers. Uh, I took this around to appraisal uh, organizations and meetings for several years, and I could get, I just got very little interest from appraisers. Mm -hmm. Times were good. Appraisers didn't see a need to change. There's that change thing again. Yeah. Uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't argue with that. Uh, so we have uh, approached the appraisal community with automated technology, um, and, and I don't call mine an ABM. Uh, what we have, it certainly has the, uh, the, the engine, the underlying engine is automated valuation, absolutely. But we've always developed systems that are interactive and that are completely transparent and completely defensible. That's what, uh, to me, the 
technology can bring to an appraiser. It's not just a number. Uh, now, there's all, all kinds of technologies that help appraisers, it, more efficient uh, forms, uh, reporting, all sorts of things. We focus on the value conclusion. With us, it's not about completeness of a form, compliance with a regulation. Okay. It's about where did that value come from? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the big that's question. The and I think that's the question that every appraiser deals with from, uh, shall we even say, a fear-based perspective. Every time I sign my signature on the bottom of an appraisal report, I know intuitively this could go before a judge. This could go before the state board. Have I crossed my T's? Have I dotted my I's? And I'll tell you, appraisers that are coming to me, my listeners and 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 those that are members of my all-star team and, and others have come to me with a little bit of fear in their heart saying, you know, my clients are wanting more and more support for what I do and and it's hard. And so I think this is something that is is well needed. I know 1981 was a long time ago. I, I find it interesting. It was created. AVMs were created for appraisers, and they said, "Nah, we don't need it." And so then the uh, the banks, I guess, uh, said, "Well, we could use it." <laughs> and that's what I think. Uh, uh, yeah, and the, and the and the appraisers got a little bit fearful and thought, "Uh oh, are we gonna are we gonna uh, uh, be fearful for our job in the future?" But the point is, Mark, I think that this is is something that appraisers. If they're not waking up to the reality that they need to be more supportive of what they do in their appraisals, then then they're they're living on a different planet than I'm on because that is what my clients are are asking for, and that's what I want as a good appraiser to provide. Well, you know, Dustin, you just mentioned that uh, you think about that every time you develop an appraisal is uh, this could go before a judge, it could go before whoever. Your, your valuations, all valuations, are going to be judged by somebody, whether it's a user or somebody who um, supports a user. It's going to be judged. And uh, you have to have complete transparency. You have to have uh, full defensibility. Uh, you have to disclose everything. This can't be a black box. And that's, that's how I uh, differentiate what we do between an AVM and what MR technology does. We don't use regression. Regression is a great tool for some things. It's an inappropriate tool uh, for the appraisal industry, in my opinion. Okay, good. Uh, That's interesting. Like giving somebody a loaded gun. Uh, that doesn't know how to use it. Well, and that uh, and that's a key. I want to I want to pause there for just a second, Mark, if you don't yeah. mind, and I'll and I'll let you finish your your thought. Um, but I got together. Um, I think it was last year, the year before, maybe with Josh Wallet, who is an expert on regression, and he uses regression quite a bit in his appraisals. But here's the difference, and I think this is what you're saying: is is Josh understands what he's doing because he created the program that does it, and he he on on a webinar showed us how to utilize and 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 do regression just using Excel, not not one of these programs that kind of does it in the background. You throw it out there on the report. And then if you get before the state board, say, well, gee, gee, officer, I, that's the number it spit out. I, I don't know where it came from. I mean, that obviously is 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 not appropriate. Um, regression can be a tool, but it is, as Josh would say, it's one tool of many. Exactly. Same with artificial intelligence. I got a kick out of uh, listening to Mark Zuckerberg uh, on his testimony the other day. You know, AI is a, is a big topic. Uh, AI, no question, AI is, is part of our future. But here is a, a guy who runs one of the biggest companies in the world, and he says, we are developing AI technology for Facebook, and we believe that within 10 or 15 years, we'll have it. Hmm. He said, the problem with AI today is even the people that, that run it, that develop it, don't understand it. And that's what I think everybody needs to understand here. Uh, when we first started developing this uh, in the early years, we actually got a real estate attorney uh, to come and consult with us. And, and we literally said, we want you to put us on the stand. If, if you can poke holes in the defensibility of what we're doing, then you need to tell us uh, where those holes are so we can fix them. Love it. Uh, that is absolutely essential to me. If you, you know, as a banker, uh, I put myself back in that banker chair. If somebody gave me an appraisal and I could not understand where that value came from, if I couldn't form an opinion about that value, 
I could not use that hmm. in a decision making process. And it's just that simple. Man, that is so key, Mark. I think sometimes appraisers, and, and, and I'm as guilty of this as any other appraiser, but we work for these companies and sometimes they come back with stipulation. Let's just be fair. Some of the stipulations are just stupid. You know, the questions that they give us in return when we turn our report in, they're just silly and somebody is just trying to justify their job. On the other hand, we also need to step back sometimes and say, hey, if there are questions and legitimate questions being asked, did I as an appraiser do my job in in explaining and fully, you know, developing why I did what I did. Uh, I, I work with with other appraisers, and sometimes uh, I, I look at their reports and and give them some feedback. And sometimes I say, you know, what what are you trying to do here? And they can explain it. They say, oh yeah, well I did that because that that that. And I say, hold on, why don't you just put that in the report? What what you just told me verbally, you should have written down and put in the report. Explain what you're doing so I, the user, can understand. Exactly. Exactly. So, so where yeah. where we're at now, Mark, is is I see that that this industry, if you will, this profession, appraisers, we're we're kind of at a crossroads right now. I think of a lot of appraisers are. In fact, if I if I stopped a random hundred appraisers on the street and I said, "Do you think you're going to have a job in five years?" I'll bet you fifty percent of them would say no. Uh, appraisers are thinking that appraisal is going away, and frankly, if I can be so bold, it is unless we appraisers stand up and say, "Hold on." We are valuable. We are valuable to the process, and here's why. Simply providing three comps, some adjustments, and some and some narrative is not going to cut it in the future. We as appraisers have to stand up and say, here's why we are valuable to the lending profession, uh, why we are valuable to uh, court testimony, why we are valuable to the homeowner. In other words, we have to justify our jobs by standing up and say, you know what, there's a difference between a computer program, which, by the way, are getting better and better at what they're doing, and what we do as appraisers. And I think that these two things married can work together very well. I say two things, meaning technology, similar to what you're, you're talking about today, and the appraiser who wants to share the story as to why they came up with the value that they came up with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, going back, you, you mentioned the, this whole business about being judged. Uh, think of this, and, and this uh, appraisers, I think, should ponder this. When you turn an appraisal over to somebody, that somebody probably has more data and more analytics than the appraiser has. Yep. And that's outrageous. So you're going to be, your work is going to be judged probably by some sort of automated process that will closely align itself with automated valuation. And the implication is that the automated valuation uh, is better than the appraiser. And, and that would just make me furious if yeah. I was an appraiser. I would say, by golly, I'm going to make sure that my data and my analytics are superior to what is being used against me. Uh, and, and I think that that is, uh, is quite possible today. I don't think that that's a difficult thing. I don't either, Mark. And automated I valuations are, uh, I, I know a lot of appraisers are afraid of them, should be. They've taken a lot of business. They've taken uh, uh, really the low-hanging fruit out yeah. of the valuation business. Yep. That's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, there are all sorts of alternate products being developed today uh, it, that are, uh, I'll tell you what we hear in the, in the industry when we go out and talk to people who are looking for new tools. They say, you know, we uh, get uh, two, three BPOs. We don't like BPOs but we can't afford two or three appraisals. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really believe the BPOs. Boy, what we'd really like is if there was an appraisal process program that could generate something kind of similar to a BPO, but a little bit more credible and it was done by an appraiser. Yep. That's what really the industry... So I think you're right, Dustin. There is an opportunity right now to, to, to capitalize on that thinking and to produce that product that will not only compete with the BPO and, and, and keep appraisers from losing a, a greater percentage of their business, but actually to be able to recapture some of the business that has been lost to uh, these non-traditional products. Well put, Mark. Well put. We're uh, talking with Mark Stockton 
of MR Technology Holdings, LLC. He's talking to us about technology and how we as appraisers can utilize that, should be utilizing that in the appraisal process. Speaking of technology and uh, allowing technology to allow us to be more efficient, more effective at what we do, we're sponsored today by Datamaster. Datamaster is something I've been using for several years now. It's not in all of my areas. It's in a few, uh, and they're not even the areas that I use mostly, unfortunately. But uh, Datamaster truly is the data master. It uh, takes the data and imports it into your appraisal process and so that you can focus on what you need to focus on, which is valuation and not data input. Folks, if you want to be more efficient and save 30 to 60 minutes per report, check out Data Master. Go to datamasterusa.com. One more time, it's datamasterusa.com. Of course, I've been using all mode software for over 20 years. Uh, you've heard me say that uh, on this program multiple times. Why? Why do I stay with all mode All mode allows allows me to be as efficient and effective at what I do as possible. It will you as well. All Mode is a company that uh, gives you all of the tools that you need inside the appraisal process to allow you, again, to focus on being an appraiser, uh, not focus on the little uh, extras, the tier one, tier two stuff that we've talked about so often. You're a tier three uh, appraisal professional, and you need to be evaluation professional. Alamode allows you to be able to do that more effectively. Go to alamode.com to learn more or pick up the phone and call their sales team at 800 alamode Finally, we, of course, are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, I got an email just this morning from Working RE. I clicked on it. I read through the uh, very short but very informative article about our profession. Folks, if you want to be in the know and understand some of the changes that Mark and I are talking about today, you need to be on on workingre.com's mailing list. Just go to workingre.com. A little pop-up will come up and you can just put your email in there and you won't miss a thing. It's workingre.com. One more time, workingre.com. All right, folks, welcome back to the program. We're talking today with uh, Mr. Mark Stockton out of uh, New Mexico. He is uh, the founder and managing member of MR Technology Holdings, LLC. He's talking to us a little bit about technology. Welcome back to the program, Mark. Thank you. I think it's fair that we've set this up in the sense that uh, uh, appraisals are changing. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And one of the things that uh, that we as appraisers need to do more of is to support the story that we're telling. In other words, it's not enough to give the the last page of the book in, in the sense that, hey, here's the valuation. Here's, here's the value of the property. You've got to tell the story. You've got to help the user understand why you came up with the value that you came up with. And we as appraisers in addition to that, need to prove ourselves in the marketplace. We are in a changing field right now. Uh, things are going more and more towards technology, AVMs, if you will, and appraisers are being fearful about their job. And I, you know, you talked about the low-hanging fruit, and I agree, uh, Mark. There's there's that low-hanging fruit that, let's, let's face it, uh, Zillow, when it comes to the model match home within a subdivision, is not too far off. And, and more and more lenders are relying on those types of valuations. We as appraisers have to reestablish ourselves in the marketplace and say, no, hold on. Th sure, the low-hanging fruit, fine, whatever. That's gone, all right? But in the future, I've got some mid and some high-hanging fruit that uh, that we as appraisers are the experts on. Would you agree with that? I would, and I think that the narrative is changing, and I think that the product mix is changing. And, and I would like for appraisers to uh, forget about AVMs and, and what uh, impact they have had and might have in the future. They are here. But the advent of evaluations is something that I would like to see appraisers pay more attention to. And I'm not uh, suggesting that uh, appraisers leave their traditional uh, appraisal practice in any way, but I would like to see them augmented hmm. with evaluations uh, my belief is, and, and as I have said, I've been at this for a long, long time, uh, I think that evaluations are going to have the biggest impact on the future of the appraisal industry, certainly for the rest of my working life. And evaluations are something where you're not tied to a 1004, where you can supplement it with some good analytics and some explanations. You're not just a forms processor. Now you're 
Now you have the opportunity to really show your expertise uh, and use technology and data. And I think that's something that I'd like to see uh, appraisers pay more attention to. Let's say an appraiser is listening to this and agree uh, with you and I that things are changing. It's it's becoming more and more important that we utilize technology within the evaluation uh, process. Um, tell me a little bit more briefly about your product and, and what you, you bring to that field. Uh, we've taken a, a totally different approach than has been uh, taken uh, after we developed the AVM. As I mentioned earlier, we don't use regression. Uh, we started with that and found it uh, to be uh, unsuitable for most situations. Uh, we don't use AI. We use the fundamental relationships that exist in all real estate markets. And I think that, you know, so basically what we're doing is, I always say, we do what an appraiser would do if they had the time to do it. Mm. So we do a market approach. Ours is, is a proprietary, but it would not be uh, something that would be unfamiliar to most appraisers. We do a land residual approach. We do an assessment analysis. If a property is sold recently uh, in the last several years, we'll trend that sale price forward. So we're using multiple uh, approaches to value, and they are all approaches that we all learned about at one time, even though very few people use them anymore. We do a depreciated replacement cost on every single property. Why do we do all that? Well. One of the things that I have found in, in the long time I've been doing this is that there is never one approach to the valuation problem that is always the best Amen. Uh, in any situation and in, in a particular market. It changes uh, when you're doing multiple analyses. Uh, and again, they, these are all based on fundamental relationships that exist in every real estate market. Different analyses use the data to give you different perspectives. And so when you do that, uh, and then you reconcile the values, uh, then you can come up with a value conclusion that is supported by analytics and data. And you can share all that with people uh, very easily. And it's understandable. It's not difficult for somebody to understand even a land residual analysis. You can explain that to somebody in, in less than a minute, and it makes sense. Right. So, yeah, there's nothing, nothing that is difficult to understand. It's a very transparent process. In fact, to, I always put it this way. If somebody takes the data that we use for any individual valuation and our definition of what each of our approaches is, and we put it right in the report, we're not afraid to share that information. Okay. And they take the definition right down to the equation and they apply it to the data that is in the report. And we always share all the data, all the property information. Uh, and they did this with a handheld calculator. They would come up with the exact same value that we came up with in each one of the individual uh, analyses to the penny. Wow. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that, that's the way it should be. It's, it's something that anybody can understand. They can say, OK, I see where you got that. That makes sense to me. So, uh, so, it's, so it's we're not going to be put before our state board and they say, you know, how did you come up with that? And, and we point to the black box and say, I don't I don't know. I, I bought this program and, and that's what it said. That's right. And going back to our the way we originated this, uh, when we had the, uh, the real estate attorney uh, putting us on the stand, he held our feet to the fire. <laughs> well, where did this come from? Where did that number come from? Where, and we can tell them. And any, any, anybody who uses... Uh, our technology can do that. And to me, that's very, very important. Let me just mention one thing in regard to that. People are afraid, uh, appraisers are afraid of AVMs, and you hear all these accuracy statistics sure. that are, are quite honestly uh, misleading. Sure. I don't care who it is, anybody that, uh, any of the big companies, they'll say, you know, our uh, uh, mean error is five and a half percent plus or minus. Right. right. Well, the real estate market isn't that exact. Uh, so, you know, what I would like to see, and I think this is something that uh, works to the benefit of appraisers, I would like to see the narrative change from accuracy to defensibility. I'd like to say to, to Zillow, you think your, your value is within 5% plus or minus? Uh, show me, defend that value. And the fact is nobody can. 
appraisers can do that if they will do that. Yep, yep. And so their, their competition can't do that. That's something they need to keep in mind. Uh, that, that's a real positive. That is a key right there, I think, Mark. When we talk about reinventing ourselves, if you will, or showing our customers, our clients, why we are still uh, valuable to this marketplace, it's not just about us competing with technology. It's also, again, about us competing with our with our peers. Uh, why should why should they come to Mark Stockton for an appraisal? Why should they come to Dustin Harris for an appraisal versus Joe Blow or, or, or Jane Doe, uh, who's going to be in the same town and may even have more quote unquote, experience in in the marketplace, we've got to establish ourselves with the value that we bring to the process. And that is accuracy. And that is being able to support the opinions of, again, they're still opinions, right? But but sure. being able to support and help the reader to understand where we came from, uh, and that gives us a leg up on our competition, whether it be technology or other people. And that's, and that's the value of technology, using data and good analytics to do more with more information than you can otherwise. You simply can't do it without, uh, without some sort of technology. You have to have that to compete in this marketplace, and you can change the narrative. And uh, I believe that appraisers can take control of their industry again. I really do. Man, I love that. What a, what a great positive uh, note to end on. Tell us a little bit about... Uh, Mark, where we as appraisers can find out more about your uh, product and uh, whether or not it uh, it is beneficial to our particular uh, needs. Where where would we go to find out more? Sure. The, 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 what I would ask people to do is just to call me or email me directly. Uh, it's Mark Stockton. Uh, my phone number is area code 505-490-2011. Give it, give it one more and- time. Five zero five four nine zero two zero one one, and my email is Mark M A R K L as in Lee Stockton S T O C K T O N at yahoo.com. Perfect. I will put that and uh, link that in the uh, in the show notes. Uh, so that people can get a hold of you and uh, learn more about uh, this great technology. Uh, do you mind giving us uh, maybe a rundown of, of cost and, and what's involved if somebody's interested in, uh, in, in looking at that product? Uh, interesting. Uh, we have not been selling this directly to appraisers now oh. for the last several years. Okay. We're just getting ready to start doing that again. Interesting. We're, okay. Uh, we're partnering with a couple of other companies. Uh, And it will be made available and we will make it available. I will put it this way, extremely uh, reasonable. Because what I would like to see appraisers do, the the technology is capable of generating evaluations. It is capable of generating USPAP compliant uh, appraisal reports, not 1004s, but Mm -hmm. uh, uh, proprietary reports. But what I'd like to see appraisers do is to use technology, love to see them use our technology, but use technology on every single valuation problem they ever have, even if the output uh, ends up just being uh, file documentation. Yeah, I love I it. Just work file. need to get used to doing that. And so it needs to be priced to where they can do that. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Mark, thank you. I really appreciate your time today. Uh, you, you've taught us. Uh, your wisdom. You've been an appraiser for, for uh, well, long enough that I look up to you as a mentor, and uh, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm going to pat you on the back a little bit. I, I deal with a lot of, uh, shall we say, more experienced appraisers uh, who are very, very resistant to to some of the changes that are happening, uh, whether we like it or not, in in the appraisal profession. It's great to talk to somebody of your caliber who uh, who's open uh, to, uh, to some of the changes and how we, as appraisers, can and reinvent ourselves, if you will, uh, to show our clients and our customers that we still have value out there. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. That was Mark Stockton uh, of MR Technology Holdings, LLC. Mark, when you're ready for the marketplace, would you reach out to me again and, and we'll have you back on the program and talk a little bit more about uh, uh, where appraisers can find you? Absolutely. Okay. I certainly will. Perfect. Perfect. I would love to have that. Uh, so reach out to me at that point and, and uh, listeners keep listening and uh, we'll have Mark back on at a, uh, a very uh, uh, soon future date uh, to talk more about this. Folks, we talked a little bit about the all-star team earlier and I'll tell you, this is what the all-star team does all the time 
is uh, give you ideas on tools and tips and tricks and, and uh, you know, technologies that are out there to help you to be more efficient. Uh, every single month, you get a full eight-page color newsletter that goes into very, very, very detailed information about how I run my appraisal office so much different than my peers. Uh, it's also audio, so you can listen to it while you drive around. Uh, every month, it comes in both formats. And one of the things that we do is what's called the two-point conversion. And uh, it's kind of a play on words because it's kind of a, a sports theme, uh, if you will, on the newsletter. But uh, every single month, I give you two tools every month. Uh, it might be a book, it might be a principle, it uh, might be an app, it might be a computer program, it might be, you name it, fill in the blank. Uh, but two tools that you can start using or at least look at and determine whether or not they're going to be helpful to your particular appraisal practice. Folks, join us. It's only nine bucks a month. Uh, go to theappraisercoach.com and uh, just click on memberships and find out more. We would love to have you be a part of the all-star team. Thanks again to Mark Stockton and uh, thanks listeners for joining me and we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.